This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about how to verify trigonometric identities. In our first section, we're going to talk about what that actually means to verify trigonometric identities, and we'll talk about some of the formulas that we'll be using to help do that. And then, in the three sections that follow thereafter, we'll do three problems. All right, let's get started. Let's first talk about what it means to verify an identity. So here you'll see I have an example that I pulled up from mathguide.com. I've got the initial statement, which is step zero, and you'll see I have two different sides. I have the left-hand side, sometimes called the LHS, and I have the right-hand side, sometimes that's called the RHS. The job is to try to get those two sides exactly equal to each other. If by using some substitutions, using some very clever formulas and uh, relations, if I'm able to simplify one side, and actually even I could work with both sides, but if I can get one side to look like the other using algebra, then I know that the initial statement is correct and it's called an identity. All right, so let's get rid of this and let's talk about the tools that are available. Well, let's get to our first set of tools. These tools are called Pythagorean identities and I prove again on mathguide.com using a different video uh, where they come from, but uh, these are some relations that are very helpful. Let's talk about some more. So here are called reciprocal relations, and uh, if you know anything about trig, it just means, of course, that cosine and secant are reciprocal relations. Sine and cosecant are re reciprocal relations, and so are tangent and cotangent. All right, there's a couple more. So these two are called quotient identities, and it just, of course, means that tangent is equal to sine over cosine, and cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So I'll be using these um, when I demonstrate the next three problems. All right, let's get started. Here's our first problem, and uh, we're going to verify this expression. Actually, I should say this identity. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is at first I'm going to mess around with this more complicated right-hand side. So I'm going to start there. Okay, so what am I going to do first? Well, I just happened to notice uh, that the, uh, not the numerator so much, but the denominator is kind of interesting because if I use the reciprocal functions, uh, actually, sorry, the quotient functions, I know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Okay, and I know that cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay, so I just replaced the cotangent tangent with the respective uh, you know, formulas. Now, I'm going to try to get a common denominator here. So uh, I'm going to dip into black here for a second, but you can see that this uh, fraction is missing the sine. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by sine. And I'm just looking at these two fractions, not the whole compound fraction, but I'm trying to get, add these by getting a common denominator. This denominator is missing the cosine. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosine. Okay, so upon doing that, you can see that the numerator is staying the same. Uh, you know what, maybe I could squeeze this all in there. I'll get cosecant x, cosine of x. Okay, so what is this? So here, this is gonna be sine squared. Okay, you can see that that's gonna be a sine squared x. Here you're gonna see that this is gonna be a cosine squared. Uh, and, of course, this denominator is sine, cosine. This denominator is sine, cosine. So I'm actually going to add the two numerators. I'm going to add these numerators together, and I'm going to keep the common denominator, which is sine x, cosine x. All right, so 
you'll notice that this numerator here uh, in the, de the denominator of the compound fraction is equal to 1. Again, I'm using the <coughs> first trigonometric, uh, sorry, Pythagorean identity. It's equal to 1. So the compound fraction is going to clean up even further. So I know that this numerator here of my denominator is 1. And of course, I still have the sine x cosine x. All right, that cleaned up things a bit. Now, if you know anything about fractions, this is just the cosecant x cosine of x is all being divided by 1 over sine x cosine x. Okay, so that's what that means. I'm just dividing. This, this is a giant division sign. It's the major fraction bar of the problem. If you know anything, about this, that means that I'm going to change this cosecant x, cosecant, uh, cosine of x. I'm going to change this to a multiplication problem. And you do that by taking the refer, uh, reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, now I'm going to multiply these two guys together. So let's see, I multiply all this together, I'm going to get cosecant x. Uh, I'm going to get, uh, let's see, cosine of x squared, and I'm going to get a sine of x. Okay, so all of that is being multiplied together. Cosine to cosine, cosecant sine, yep, got it all together. Uh, all right, I need a little bit more room, so I'm going to scroll down a bit. Okay, so uh, what am I going to do next? Well, I notice that the cosecant is really 1 over sine. Okay, so over coming back over here, cosecant's 1 over sine of x. And now that's next to cosine squared x sine of x. And of course, you can see the sines are going to cancel, leaving you with just a cosine squared of x as my final answer. And you can see that that right-hand side cleaned up to be the left-hand side, and that verifies the identity, meaning we're done. Okay, let's go on to our next problem. All right, here's our second problem, and uh, I'm going to mess around with the right-hand side, see if I can get it to make it, see if I can make it look like the left-hand side. All right, now, uh, in order to understand what I'm about to do, uh, I just want to throw on some old algebra. So if I were to take x plus 3 times x minus 3, everyone should know, if you know a little something about algebra, that I'm going to get x squared minus 9. So, and the reason is because when I multiply the inside, I get 3x. And when I multiply the outside, I get negative 3x. And you'll see that those x terms cancel. So I'm going to make use of this. Okay, how am I going to make use of this? If I'm going to multiply, I'm going to multiply this thing by 1 plus cosine of x, top and bottom. People don't usually realize why this step is employed. It, it's because of this property right here. Okay, so how does this help? Well, it looks like in my numerator, not so much. I just get this cosine of x. Okay, but when I multiply these two guys together, I'm going to get a 1 minus cosine squared x. See? No middle term. I'm not going to go through the uh, you know double distributive property or FOIL, but it helps. Okay, it helps to see this, understand what's going on. Okay, so what's the denominator? Uh, this is really 1 minus cosine squared. Let me show you why. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, now if you look at the top identity, you'll see that if I were to move the cosine squared over, I'm going to get sine squared uh, is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so that means I'm going to replace this denominator with 1 minus, I'm sorry, the 1 minus cosine squared with the sine squared. Okay, so the numerator stays the same. Okay, so I get 1 plus cosine x 
And in the denominator, I am getting this is all sine squared. Okay, but you can see that one of the sine squareds on top is going to cancel with one of the sine squareds in the bottom. So I'm going to get a 1 plus cosine x in the numerator. And down here, I'm just going to get a sine squared x. Okay, and you can see, of course, that is now the left-hand side. And I've again proven that this identity is in fact valid. All right, let's get on to our last problem. All right, here's our last example that we're going to look at. Okay, we're going to verify this identity. And uh, what I want to do, of course, is again make use of the same property that we used in our first example by dealing with this denominator. So what I want to do is use that little property that says that I can multiply this by 1 plus sine of x. And whatever I multiply the bottom of the fraction by, I multiply the top. Okay, so if I were to multiply here, um, again, not much really happens here in the numerator. Nothing fun, really. They get kind of a, you know, kind of a unwieldy mix here. But down here, I get a 1 minus sine squared when I multiply those two guys together. Uh, okay, and that's kind of nice because if you go back to our Pythagorean identities, okay, you could see that if I were to subtract with our first Pythagorean identity, subtract cosine squared from both, nope, sorry, subtract sine squared from both sides, uh, I'm going to get cosine, I'll move over here, cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, if I just subtract the sine squared from both sides. And you can see that means our new denominator is going to be equal to cosine squared. Okay, and our numerator, of course, is staying the same at the moment. All right, you'll see that one of the cosines in the denominator cancels with one of the cosines in the numerator. Okay, so that one on top cancels. So we get a 1 plus sine of x in the numerator. Okay. Um, and the cosine here cancels with one of the cosines there. Okay, so you can see one of the cosines in the denominator cancels with that one. Just leaving a cosine there. And you're wondering, hmm, how does this help? Well, I'm going to move this up here. Okay, so what is this? This is going to be 1, if I divide, I'm going to actually divide this whole numerator by cosine. So this is 1 divided by the cosine of x. And then here I get sine x divided by cosine of x. Okay, so I just divided everything by cosine of x. Okay, now what is this? 1 over cosine is just the secant. Sine over cosine, that's just tangent. And now you can see secant plus tangent is equal to the left-hand side. Uh, make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our other instructional videos. Uh, check out our interactive quizzes and, of course, our other text-based lessons. Take care.